and welcome back to my youtube channel so here is my review for love island season six episode three but before i get to this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe you already know road to 20k Alrighty guys, the episode starts off with Amy and Johnny meeting each other for the first time. They're the first couple that got proposed to um, and they seemed very, very happy. They seemed very, very shocked. They instantly went out and um, went to making out. Um, yeah, you see people, I feel like, give like little kissy kisses kiss, but they were kissing like they don't know each other for years. Um, but I definitely thought it was cute. Amy has now admitted that, oh, not now has admitted, she only just saw him, but um, she's admitted that He's not her usual type. She's not someone that, like, he's not someone that she would approach in the world, in the real world. Um, so she usually goes for ethnic men. She is an ethnic girl. So um, I get it. Um, but she says she's open. So I think this is where, like, they, like this, her having a preference with ethnic men because she is ethnic. I don't think that's an issue. But of course, going on Love is Blind and, you know what I mean? Love being blind and you fall in love with someone sight unseen she's open to the process because she's here to do the real process um so she also mentioned that her dad had a dream that she had two strawberry blonde children and given that um jeremy i'm not jeremy johnny has um strawberry blonde hair it looks like he's giving again in terms of science now the brown hair still might win because um strawberry blonde is definitely a recessive hair color but that's not the end or there so yeah they seem happy together and i'm i'm inclined and keen to see how they're gonna get on um let's just hope that they really do find each other attractive because i think the rest of the things at least as of how they seem right now it seems like the things will fall into place nicely so jamal and clay are having a conversation and all of a sudden clay starts i'm not playing yeah clay starts crying and i'm like why is my bro crying like what's he crying about it just seemed like he's a little bit spiraling a little bit and i was just like i don't understand where this is coming from but he said that he was crying because he feels like the perception of him the people the way people are perceiving him isn't him now from someone that has said that he's a bad person or not a good person we were whichever which way you want to slice it or dice it the fact that he is crying about people perceiving him well but are you putting yourself in a position to be perceived the way you actually are so yes he's crying but i just i am and i'm not heartless i'm not saying he's doing crocodile tears i'm just worried that is he, is he got the self-awareness has he got the that he, that he needs because he's crying about being perceived a certain type of way but how are you putting yourself how are you showing yourself in the world if it's not giving a good look then your perception will match the way you're doing it so it's a bit of a difficult one um it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a difficult one he has a lot of work to do and um him wanting love isn't good enough he needs to really work on himself and i definitely think he is somebody that needs therapy he seems quite fragile if i'm so serious and for someone that is a ladies man yeah he's he's yeah he i didn't always i didn't think ladies man men will come like this not that there's a person issue with it but i just haven't really seen a, a ladies man behave in this manner i thought they would be more nonchalant more i don't give a you know what I mean? I'm going to do on to others. They better not do on to me type energy. But he's not giving that. He's definitely giving a little bit of something, something different. So then we see AD and Clay have a conversation. And he comes out and apologizes for cursing. And even though I am receptive. Well, no, I'm not going to say I'm receptive. Did he apologize to me? But um, I hear the apology. And I think it's good that he is apologizing and recognizing where he's going wrong it's just that this is the second time he's on a, he's apologized in such a short period of time it makes me feel like they're gonna have more instances of conflict and there's gonna be more times he's saying sorry again i appreciate no, so, i think it's good that he said sorry but my only issue is are you saying are we gonna say sorry and change behavior are we gonna say sorry and it just be a sorry is it just a word to you so that's definitely something i'm looking out for um ad was saying that she feels like matthew was basically playing on her weaknesses basically feeding her bs and she kind of fell for him because she was trying to justify how how can you like clay and matthew these two people are so different it doesn't even like i understand that people can like different pe people and yin and yang and all that bs but if we're in this type of process right now i'm sorry if a girl was like matthew and you're talking to me you don't need to be speaking to me because like i said you're a bad judge of character um you do not you don't respect me you don't rate me i'm good i'm not fighting for a girl that doesn't know like doesn't know if i'm um, head from shoulders so me personally i wouldn't be interested but 
Clay was very much so hurt by the whole situation because he wants to be picked. He wants to be the one and only, even though this is a process where you date 14 other people, um, he wants to be the one and only basically from the offset. AD was saying that she was triggered basically by him shouting at her. So I definitely think that's something he also needs to work on. It's not going to change overnight. So she better <laughs> she better put on her armor and get ready because she's about to go to war with this guy for sure. Um, he has a lot of work to do and he did say that he uses his achievements, his ego, his accolades, his looks um, as, a, as, an arm, as a, a piece of armor, but it's fragile anyway. So there's no point of him trying to overcompensate. He needs to just face what the situation is, what the rule of it is, and just work it through i think there's you have to work through it not around it not over it or not under it just you have to work through it i did appreciate that he did say he was sensitive if i'm honest i don't know if i um i'm trying to think maybe i know a couple maybe a couple handful of guys that i know are sensitive or self-proclaimed sensitive people but it is still quite rare for a man to say that they're sensitive so i appreciate he's um his openness i just i'm just hoping he's not blowing smoke up my behind trying to come across vulnerable and he's just but at the same time i think that two things can be true at the same time i think he can be sensitive and still blow up so i think it was let me just give him i think it's great as a black man that he's coming out and saying that he's sensitive it's just that hopefully the way in which he shows that sensitivity doesn't go around messing up another another person let's just say that um so i definitely think he has the tools to do well we just have to hope and see he does well he apologizes for basically prioritizing looks and he's saying that he's all about her he wants to change for her and she's saying that she's prepared to start helping him change and to be a better version of himself now i think the whole idea of like doing this together or building together i think that concept is sweet but that whole idea that someone's changing for me i don't want you to change for me change for yourself because in my head that's going to be a more longer lasting change than you changing for me it seems like if i do something wrong would you would you now stop changing for me if you're upset with me would you now stop changing for me there's too many conditions that may come about that if you just change for yourself you're the only person that's going to be consistent in your life you know what I mean? you're the only as long as you're alive you're the only person you're gonna that that you can hold accountable if that makes sense so i don't like the whole idea of him basically doing this for her but then i also equally don't like the idea that she's prepared to do this for him she's gonna make him a better man she's trying to build a man she's trying to build a bear i don't think that's smart because also you're trying to build him in what your image potentially he's going to resent you because you're going to be you're almost going to be mothering him um telling him what to do and then if you got if he doesn't agree with you where does that leave you guys? I feel like there's so many arguments pending in this relationship. But, ciao, if they like it, then I guess they like it. Kenneth and Brittany have a conversation and they have a little day. He planned that little day with some painting, some fairy lights, some food. I thought it was very cute. Um, I find them very cutesy. I don't know why Brittany, Brittany said that, um, what is the ethnicity of your family? Because the ethnicity of his family is his ethnicity. So, girl just say is you black or not but anyways she he confirms that he is black and she could tell from his voice and that's why i said in my i think episode one that sometimes you can tell from people's um voices or was it, i don't know if it was episode one or episode two but anyways you can tell from people's voices sometimes their race potentially you can guess it's not going to be 100 percent right but sometimes it might be close enough he of course guessed that she was white which of course is the case um, and he does say that he's never dated a white girl before later on. So it's going to be a, a lot of fuss for some people about this whole love is blind process. She says he also sound, sounds stocky, which was also true because I don't think he's short. I don't think he's tall, but he definitely is stocky. So it's funny how much you can tell about somebody simply from their voice. So, um, Laura has a conversation with um, one of the other girls and she's talking about Sarah Ann and she feels like she is helping Sarah Ann through the process of dating Jeremy. However, she's not letting her know that she's also dating Jeremy and isn't trying to rub it in her face. And, um, for me personally, I feel like Laura was being too cocky in this situation because I'm not saying Jeremy doesn't like her, but I think the way she's so sure of herself, um, she might need to humble herself a little bit. 
She just might want to. So Laura and Jeremy have a date and he says he has sleep ap ap is it apnea? Apnea, I think is how you pronounce it, which is quite serious. Oh my gosh, as such a young as for such a young guy, why has he got a sleep apnea? Like and he's not overweight, so I'm just trying to figure out what the issue is, but that's yeah, something interesting. Laura mentions that she doesn't have any family traditions and he also agrees. He said he used to, his family used to do that all the time, but they've now since stopped. And he is saying that he wants to do that going forward with his family. And he says that Laura is his number one. However, Jeremy and Sarah Ann have a date and he says that it's the confessional that she's a wild card and that he definitely sees her up there with Laura, but she's just she just brings different energy to the situation. I think she might be more like fun, so to speak, but we shall see. She admits that she's had Botox, she's had fillers, and that she loves taking pictures. I think she might have been the one that said that in her profile that she wanted someone that could take Instagram pictures for her. So I guess she's living up true to what she wants. He says, how many Instagram followers do you have? And she says 4,000. Um, I guess 4,000 to a normal person is a lot. Of course, if you think about like the celebrity culture, then of course not. But in terms of a regular, regular person, 4,000 is a lot. It is a lot. Um, and then on TikTok, she has 31,000. So she's definitely TikToking for show. But she says, she does say she doesn't have um, OF. So, qua. Um, so they start talking about politics. And she says she's a conservative and she's a, a patriot. Now, the whole. I'm not saying don't love your country. I'm not saying it by no means. But I don't know. For someone to be a self um, a self proclaimed patriot, like pa patriot, pa a patriotic person. I don't know, especially when they're American, it just gives me side eye. Um, I don't know, it just gives me a, a real confederate flag tease. I'm not saying that's everybody, but I don't know, there's just something about when I see people say they're patriots, it's, uh, or patriotic, it's usually those type of people. And it's not people that I have, I have any business with. I'm not saying that that's every single person, but I don't know, I don't know. So she's conservative, but it seems like from his lack of reaction that he's probably, um, uh, he's liberal sorry she was talking about her stance on abortion and how she feels like people shouldn't have it unless SA has happened to them or so to speak um so that's her stance I'm not gonna argue with her about her stance realistically speaking and I think again the whole Roe v Wade situation is absolutely ridiculous so you guys know I guess know where my stance is on the situation and I really don't care that's my that's my stance I just feel like as long as the laws are not preventing women from doing what they want to do with their bodies um if she's against it fundamentally that's that's fine because realistically speaking the only person's womb she has control over is her own and that's that's her autonomy love that for her um yeah I'm definitely pro-choice in the matter then he, then Jeremy says that his opinion on, on abortion is that men shouldn't really have an opinion. Now, I feel kind of two ways about that. I feel like I get what he means. He's trying to think. I think that's, I, I would like to think that's definitely a feminist stance. However, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with a man having an opinion because that, again, that is your, that, that is your baby as well. Um, I, 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 I know what he's trying to say. And I think he was just trying to be really like, woman empowerment with it but okay that's fine that's his answer he mentioned how he lost his dad at 19 and that he wants to take her to go see his dad's grave in florida he said he hasn't said that to anybody else so it's given the impression that they have a really really strong deep connection so him and laura did have a, a good convo but the depth that they went to sarah ann and jeremy it seems quite deep so i don't I, if i'm gonna be a, if i'm gonna predict at the moment i just think i definitely think he's gonna go for sarah ann i don't know my spirit is just telling me that i could be wrong don't let me know yet but that's what i'm thinking kenneth and Brittany have a conversation and he brings her flowers and he proposes and of course she says yes so that is our next couple of people being proposed to Jessica is speaking to one of the girls and she's crying and she's admitting that Jeremy um, that Jimmy is her person. That's who she wants to be with. She's not interested in anybody else. He's for her. She, um, I think she says she loves him in that moment. So then Jeremy and Jess actually have a date and he was asking about her social media. Um, she was asking him about social media because I guess that's been something that has been contentious in the past for her. He says he follows these like friends, football team, family members, just comedians that type of thing things that he's interested in because in her previous relationship i guess these 
her the main was that she was dating maybe were following like instagram thoughts not instagram thoughts but like instagram girls and people that like are maybe scantily clad stuff like that and i don't know for me it would be kind of icky and weird and strange for um my man to be going around following these half naked women and liking it like it's just giving moisty moisty vibes um I don't know I think there's something interesting about someone that just I don't know because of course you're liking their pictures but then you're never gonna get them so I don't know I just don't, I don't know I, me personally I, I don't follow like hot guys on Instagram and just like their pictures I don't know I, I just don't do that maybe I'm strange I don't know but I, I, I don't really like what is the point it's it's like you have this parasocial relationship with people that you don't even interact with so like of course if you got want to go do your thing on on on, on, the, on the on the internet in terms of like you want to go watch a couple videos then i can conceptualize that a bit more but i think the idea of just liking pretty girls pictures on instagram i don't know there's just something i don't i don't get it so i think that's why i don't agree with it because I, I don't get what the purpose is besides to boost their ego what does it actually do for you to see it on a platform like instagram but anyways that's the situation with that she tells him that that, that he's her number one but he doesn't say it back so he's definitely still dating Chelsea and then we see him and Chelsea have a date it's so funny because I've been noticing that they're definitely showing food a lot more I definitely think the case um is because of the the lawsuit that is allegedly going on or that is it is going on that alleges different types of working conditions including the whole food situation so they're definitely showing them with plates big plates of food when they had their salad that salad was was thick yeah when they had them sushi it's thick good po a good healthy portion of sushi so these people are eating now these people are definitely eating it just seems to me every single time i see jimmy and jess and, and chelsea have a conversation jessica somehow comes in not by name but even just by aura by reference there's just something about jessica that always seems to come up in their conversation um which is why I think Jimmy's just going to be with Jessica because it just does I'm not getting the impression because every single time they talk Jessica sometimes comes up in one form or fashion and it just makes the conversation super duper awkward she gets upset because um you know what I mean loads of people are dating the same people and she doesn't want to hurt anybody but it kind of is what it is it kind of is what it is uh she did actually say that she had a conversation with another woman of course Jessica and Jessica like kind of upset her because they were dating the same person or either Jessica got upset or Chelsea got somebody got upset child um so I was just kind of like mm, mm, it's not giving it's not giving great it's not giving great but that's what the situation is um yeah I don't think they're gonna be couple so yeah I don't think all that crying that she's doing oh my god that girl that girl, that girl cries a lot she cries a lot um Trevor and Chelsea have a conversation and he's now saying he's only interested in her. He says that I love you. Of course, she doesn't say it back. And again, she's boohoo crying again and again and again and again and again. And um, she just feels like this is the first time where someone like really, really loves her. And you know what I mean? She, seems, she feels like it's really pure and this is what she's been wanting. So it's difficult because of course, Jeremy hasn't said that to her. I mean, sorry, Jimmy hasn't said that to her. However, she seems to like him more, whereas Trevor is giving her what she wants on a platter, but she's not all the way like committed to him as of yet. Chelsea comes back and tells the girls about her conversation. However, Jessica feels up that she doesn't, of course, want to hear what she's saying because she's, of course, they both like the same man. So it's a bit of a difficult one. Um, it's a bit of a difficult one. They're gonna have to figure it out. I'm, I'm assuming by tomorrow's episode, because more people need to, so by um, episode four, definitely more people need to be proposed to. Um, yeah, definitely more people need to be proposed to. I think AD and Clay will definitely get engaged at this point. Jimmy has to make his decision. And then if Jimmy chooses Jessica, of course Trevor will choose Chelsea, but is Chelsea gonna be happy about getting picked? Also, we did not see Matt in this episode, so I think we're only going to see Matt trying to go for um, Amber sometime down the line when they're finished in the pods. Because, yeah, 
we just ain't even heard of it from him again. Also, is he going? Actually, you know, I was gonna say, oh, is he going to want to film after? He, of course, he is because that man is such a clout chaser. Is literally unreal. So we will see that man again, unfortunately. But yeah, we will see him again. Um, but guys, I haven't even put anyone in the bin because I don't think anyone even deserves to go in the bin for real in this episode. So yeah. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.